All right, happy Monday to you. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shea. And we've got a lot to talk about in the tropics, a system beginning to push into the Gulf of Mexico. Of course, whenever we hear that a system is moving into the Gulf, that can be very concerning. But I'm going to break everything down for you, show you exactly where it's headed, how strong it's expected to be, and what else we may have brewing out there in the near future. So let's get right to it. Of greatest concern at this point will continue to be the development of a tropical storm Idalia. Idalia is forecast to become a hurricane, and it is going to potentially bring major possibly catastrophic impacts to the state of Florida. You can see it down close to Cozumel near the Yucatan Peninsula and the western tip of Cuba right now as we look at our tropical satellite. So still not quite entering the Gulf of Mexico just yet, but it is forecast to push into the eastern Gulf over the next 24 hours. So this is concerning to us because this system is really starting to get its act together and it will be moving over some extremely warm waters in the eastern Gulf and it will move into an environment that will be more favorable for rapid development rapid intensification likely with this tropical cyclone over the next 24 to 36 hours we've already got numerous watches and warnings posted for tropical storm Idalia so let's go ahead and get right into this track here is the latest it is going to be moving close to Florida as we go into the next 24 hours it is forecast to become a hurricane in fact by this evening and tonight likely around 75 to 80 miles per hour. It then is going to track across the eastern Gulf of Mexico and likely push up close to the big bend of Florida north and west of Tampa by Wednesday morning into the early afternoon. So notice by Wednesday at 1 p.m. a 90 mile per hour hurricane, but we are anticipating it to strengthen briefly to a major hurricane by Wednesday morning shortly before it landfalls. So it is going to be a potential major deal and a very dangerous system that could have some widespread impacts for the state of Florida. By Thursday at 1 a.m., likely around 60 miles per hour. Thursday at 1 p.m., 60 miles per hour. So back down to a tropical storm as it starts to push over Jacksonville and portions of the coastal Georgia and Carolina area. But we are going to have the potential for this system developing into a category two or possibly a major category three hurricane shortly before landfall, likely around the big band of Florida. It's actually going to keep its act together as we go through Friday and into the weekend. It likely will push out back into the Atlantic, the Western Atlantic. But until then, and we've got a ways to go. It looks like Idalia could bring a lot of impacts to the state of Florida. Let's check out some of these watches and warnings that we have out there. We currently have a hurricane warning for the western tip of Cuba. This is where Idalia is currently very close to at this point. So they're probably feeling those tropical storm force winds at this point and also the potential for several inches of rain. Also, you can see that tropical storm watch posted there for Key West, Florida, and we've got a lot more alerts, watches and warnings for Florida as we jump up to the north. Notice a very widespread hurricane warning now in place just south of Tampa, all the way up to just south and east of Panama City, Florida. So, of course, that means Tampa Bay currently under a hurricane warning, even though the actual landfall will likely be just to the north and northwest of Tampa. Hurricane force winds, the potential for some dangerous heavy rain that could lead to flooding, that rip current risk, the storm surge, all of that will be a likelihood for Tampa. So for that reason, even though they may not get the direct landfall from Idalia, we do still have the potential for those hurricane impacts. And that's why that hurricane warning is in place. Even on the east coast of Florida, we do have tropical storm watches, including up around Jacksonville, because this tropical cyclone is expected to make landfall on the west coast of Florida around the Big Bend area, but then it's going to roll across the northern Florida peninsula and likely push right over Jacksonville as we go into the middle of the week. So lots to talk about with Adalia. I want to show you the projected wind fill with this, the projected path and the strength. Right now, as I mentioned, it's in that Yucatan channel. It's just 
to the west of that western tip of Cuba and it also is off to the east of the Yucatan Peninsula, east of Cancun, east of Cozumel, and it is going to be pushing into the eastern Gulf of Mexico over the next 24 hours. So notice it starts to pick up a little speed and by Wednesday morning still forecast to be a category three major hurricane shortly before landfall. So this is right around 8.30 a.m. Wednesday and notice that it is off to the north and west of Tampa, but notice that little area of red under that number three. That indicates the hurricane force winds that will likely roll in with this system. You notice that red indicates those hurricane force winds. So 74 miles per hour or greater and that's what we're expecting with landfall, most likely with the Dahlia early Wednesday. So that means even with the hurricane force winds off to the north and west of Tampa, look at that tropical storm force wind field. It is pretty wide. And so even if you are not under those hurricane force winds, tropical storm force winds will be felt likely around Tampa and eventually Daytona Beach and even up towards Jacksonville. So that's why we have those tropical storm watches, even for portions of the Florida East Coast, including Jacksonville. So this system will likely make landfall Wednesday morning as a major category three hurricane, and then it's going to push across the northern Florida Peninsula over towards Jacksonville, still as a category one hurricane, and then it will gradually weaken back into a tropical storm as it heads towards Georgia and the Carolinas by late this week into the weekend. But as it's making landfall late Tuesday, early Wednesday, one of the main impacts from this will be that dangerous, potentially life threatening storm surge. And for this reason, we've got several counties under states of emergency, some counties with mandatory and voluntary evacuation orders for portions of the Florida, Big Bend and other portions of the west coast of Florida because we've got a very high shot for some damaging, dangerous storm surge. In fact, the areas that you see outlined in red indicate where we could have storm surge greater than nine feet. In fact, the official forecast calling for seven to 11 feet of storm surge where Adalia ends up making landfall. And it's likely going to be right around this area that you see west of Gainesville, west of Orlando and just north and northwest of Tampa. So that is where the greatest storm surge will likely be. There could still be some four to seven feet storm surge around the Tampa area as of now, but the highest likelihood for that greatest storm surge likely going to be up to the north and west of Tampa. That would be around Spring Hill and also up towards Cedar Key. So these are the areas that we're going to be monitoring closely for that strongest and deadliest and most dangerous storm surge from Idalia. So lots of things to track with the Dahlia. Parts of Florida could pick up anywhere from four to eight inches of rain and isolated spots could have up to a foot of rain. So we've got the storm surge threat. We've got the heavy rainfall threat. Of course, we've got the hurricane force winds that will likely be over 100 miles per hour as this makes landfall. So certainly something we are watching closely as we head into the next couple of days and the next several days. But the good news for us here in Southeast Texas is that we have a kind of a trough pushing down and the steering flow will actually keep a Dahlia likely away from our area. So we're not expecting any major impacts from a Dahlia. But if you did have travel plans to Florida, expect some major delays, impacts and potentially having to cancel that trip altogether because there will certainly be deteriorating conditions for much of the Florida Panhandle and Florida Peninsula as we go through the next 24 to 48 hours. Not only do we have Adalia, we're also tracking another dangerous hurricane out in the western Atlantic and that is Franklin and we also have another tropical wave that is beginning to push off of the west coast of Africa and it now has a medium 50% chance for development over the next week. So different things we're tracking, but we do have tropical storm Adalia and we have Hurricane Franklin. So I do want to show you the track on Hurricane Franklin because this system has really blown up over the weekend and it is very impressive. In fact, it is now up to category four status. Of course, category five is as bad as it gets on the Saffir Simpson scale when you're talking about hurricane strength. 
strength. And this one is very strong with maximum sustained winds close to 100 50 miles per hour, 145 mile per hour winds right now, and movement to the north at 9 miles per hour, pressure at 937 millibars. The one good thing with this, because this is a pretty dangerous, horrible hurricane, is that it is over water and it is not expected to impact any land as it pushes across the western Atlantic over the next several days. It will make a fairly close pass to Bermuda as we go into late Tuesday, early Wednesday. I think the closest it will get to Bermuda will likely be Wednesday morning. It's likely still going to be either a category three or category four hurricane by then. So we do have tropical storm watches out for Bermuda due to the fact that this hurricane will pass close enough to where there could be some tropical storm force winds being felt across portions of Bermuda, but no actual landfall is expected for Bermuda, so that is good news. So it should kind of slide just to the west of Bermuda and then make its way off to the north and east and gradually weaken as we go into the weekend. Back down to category two by Thursday and then no longer a hurricane by Friday and Saturday. So we've got a lot to watch out there, but for Southeast Texas, at least for us, things are staying quiet now, but we've already gotten through several names for the 2023 hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin. We've gone through Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Don, Emily, Franklin, Gert, Harold, and now Idalia. If we have that next system coming off the west coast of Africa to, to develop, that one would likely be Jose. And then we would have Katia, Lee, Margo, and Nigel. So still several names that we could potentially use for this hurricane season. Hopefully not many more. We don't want things to be super active, but all of our Official forecasts that have come out recently have called for a higher number of named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes, and it looks like that may be panning out as the tropics are really starting to heat up. 18 named storms, nine hurricanes, four major hurricanes forecast by Colorado State University back at the beginning of August, and one of the main reasons why the higher number of systems was forecast was due to the fact that the waters out there are extremely warm in the Atlantic, the Caribbean and the Gulf. So that puts us above an average season, which would give us 14 named storms, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. Also, the official NOAA forecast, the last update being August 10th, called for a higher than average number of storms, 60% chance for a higher than average season, 14 to 21 named storms, 6 to 11 hurricanes, and 2 to 5 major hurricanes. So we still have a ways to go with our hurricane season. We are creeping closer and closer to that peak of hurricane season, which is September 10th. We're getting close to the beginning of September and right on cue, Mother Nature providing us with the fireworks out there in the tropics with these big time systems. We're soon to have Hurricane Adalia and we already have Category 4 Hurricane Franklin. So we'll continue tracking those, but it looks like Florida will be dealing with a pretty significant hurricane this week and Bermuda may feel some tropical storm force winds from Franklin, but nothing headed towards Southeast Texas just yet. But still don't let your guard down when things are fairly quiet. Now is the time to prepare. Make sure you have that hurricane preparedness kit ready for you and your family. Make sure you have the insurance coverage you need and know your evacuation routes before it's time to head out if something is heading towards us. Also grab our Fox 26 weather app for the latest tropical weather forecast cones, our follow me feature. Get the latest hurricane watches and warnings on there as well. Plenty of great informative things to find on there. You can also find our video weather forecast. You can track the radar in case we have any storms popping up locally. So lots to see, lots to do on there and very important information for you to have. So you can find that in the app store. Just search for Fox 26. All right, that's your tropical update for your Monday. I hope you're having a great Monday. Maybe it's your first day back at school, back at work from the weekend. Enjoy. Enjoy the rest of that day out there. Stay cool. Of course, locally it is still pretty hot out there, but no tropical activity headed towards Southeast Texas for now. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade.